The operator of a nuclear power plant in southern Japan has begun a four-day emergency drill based on a meltdown scenario in a bid to clear a final regulatory hurdle. If it passes the test, the Sendai plant in Kagoshima Prefecture will be the first in the country to go back online under the new regulations introduced following the 2011 disaster. Officials with Kyushu Electric Power Company have equipped the facility with additional power generators and other equipment based on the new requirements. But they're also required to carry out a drill for a severe accident to show it can handle major emergencies at the plant. The exercise, which started Monday, is based on a scenario where the plant's number one reactor has lost cooling water due to a rupture in pipes and a failure in the emergency pump system. The malfunction causes nuclear fuel to begin melting in less than 20 minutes. The drill will follow several more steps through Thursday before culminating in a containment of the crisis. 52 people, mainly workers at the Sendai plant, will be involved. Their aim is to prevent a massive release of radioactive materials by applying emergency generators and pumps. The operator hopes to restart the reactor as early as August 10th and begin generating electricity three days later. The people who operate Fukushima Daiichi have taken another step toward decommissioning the nuclear plant. Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, installed a protective cover after the 2011 accident. Now they're resuming work to dismantle it. Workers started to remove one of the ceiling panels from the number one reactor using a remote-controlled crane. The cover prevents the dispersal of radioactive materials into the atmosphere. But they need to take it off to be able to clear debris and remove spent nuclear fuel. TEPCO officials say it will take several months. They expect to complete the work by next winter. The process was originally due to start last July. But TEPCO officials postponed the operation after residents expressed concern over the possible spread of radioactive materials. They put off the work again in May after discovering a problem in the building. The officials sprayed chemical agents on the debris to prevent radioactive particles from being released. They say they'll keep a closer watch on radiation levels and keep the public informed. Construction of a new seawall has begun in a town near the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Authorities are preparing to lift an evacuation order for the area in September. 
Nadaha town's previous seawall was seriously damaged by the March 2011 tsunami. Construction of a new one was delayed as radiation from the nuclear accident restricted entry into the town for about a year and a half. Local government officials took part in a groundbreaking ceremony in the town on Monday. The seawall is to be about 1.8 kilometers long and stand farther inland than the old one. Its planned height is 8.7 meters above sea level. That's 2.5 meters higher than its predecessor. The construction is expected to cost about $67 million and be finished by March 2018. Some residents still suffer from memories of the disasters. I hope the construction can give them some relief. Nadaha has a population of about 7,400. The evacuation order for almost the entire town is scheduled to be lifted on September 5th. Residents of the Soma district in Fukushima prefecture have taken part in a traditional summer festival featuring samurai on horseback. The three-day event is designated as an important intangible folk cultural asset. It has become a symbol of the prefecture's reconstruction from the 2011 nuclear accident at the Fukushima Daiichi power plant. <laughs> On the second day of the festival on Sunday, about 450 men joined a horseback parade through the city of Minamisoma. They included people from the evacuation zones. The riders skillfully maneuvered their horses to catch holy flags shot off with firecrackers. The winners then rushed up a hill with the flags to declare victory. It was more impressive than I had imagined. I take part next year as a conch home blower. I practice hard. Another ritual will be held on Monday at a shrine in an evacuation zone. The participants will try to capture unsaddled horses with their bare hands. Now there's a spirit of urgency at some of Japan's electronics makers. The Tokyo Olympics is five years away, and that started a race to innovate in research labs. NHK World's Akiko Okamoto has been trying out some of the new ideas. Tokyo Station is this building? Communication in English or other languages can be difficult in Tokyo, but there might be a solution. This is a translation device Panasonic is developing. Researchers are putting it to the test. Where is the nearest sushi restaurant? The device translates what I said into Japanese, and I get my answer back. The machine can interpret simple sentences to and from Japanese, English, Chinese, and Korean. The company is also working on the prototype of a wearable translator. We're not developing a device that just translates words, but hardware that can be useful for communication. Electronics makers also have their eye on security for the 2020 games. Japanese police say they want to make use of their cameras to upgrade their surveillance system for the Olympics. That includes Sony's first 4K surveillance camera, where the company is exploiting its expertise in high-resolution image sensors and lenses. This image is taken with the company's 4K camera. Now compare that one to the high-definition camera image on the left. You can clearly see the numbers on the card shot with the 4K camera. Camera operators can select areas that need to be monitored and downgrade picture quality in other areas. Highway signs, for example, that cuts bandwidth consumption by 50 percent and offers big savings on data storage. Engineers are also helping security workers analyze what they see on cameras using recognition software technology. Take a look at this picture. When the flow of people gets larger, 
the color of the screen changes from yellow to red. When the degree of congestion becomes dangerous, an alert is automatically sent to the operator. NEC software developers are on the case too, focusing on unusual human behavior, like people suddenly running away. Company researchers are working to send these instant alerts directly to people on the streets. Our technology can provide safety and security to users so they can react faster by letting them know what is happening in real time. We feel a sports event like the Olympics is a business opportunity. We can help run the event more successfully. The Olympics is putting Japanese technology to the test. Electronics makers say if they can come through in time, the payoff for business will be world class. Japan cherished the custom of eating grilled eels on the midsummer day of the ox, the hottest day of the year. This is according to the traditional zodiac calendar. This year, that day falls on 24th July. Restaurants and fish shops are busy serving grilled eels. Customers say they can build stamina to beat the heat during this stifling season. But the number of Japanese eels is decreasing. The International Union for Conservation of Nature, the IUCN, says Japanese eels are at risk of extinction. The group put the fish on its red list last year. This can result in trade controls under the Washington Convention on Endangered Species. The eel's uncertain future is causing some concern among people who enjoy the delicacy. Researchers are working to come up with an alternative that tastes just as good. They look like eels. Mm, <laughs> What appear to be grilled eels are, in fact, catfish. This catfish is the brainchild of researchers at a university laboratory. With the number of eels dwindling, they began developing the technology four years ago to culture catfish that tastes like eel. It had to be an abundant species which can be grown in full life cycle aquaculture. We grilled all kinds of fish and found in the end that the catfish was the best. Compared with eel, the catfish meat is leaner and softer. Adiji tried to produce a taste close to the eels by feeding the catfish with various foods. I thought, what if I fed catfish with the same food as eels? So I did, but it didn't work. It tasted horrible. By trial and error, he found the taste became close to the eels by changing the food according to the growing phase of the catfish. And this is the eel-flavored catfish. Usually, catfish meat is white, but this is slightly reddish. With a largely crustacean diet, the meat becomes redder, and its texture grows firmer. Under the skin is a thick layer of fat. Eel farmers have high hopes for Ariji's study. This farm in Kagoshima Prefecture has been taking part in the research. Pools where eels used to grow are now filled with catfish. The catfish is suitable for full life cycle aquaculture. Catfish fry grow into adults in almost a year. Catfish grow fast in the facilities for eel farming. They are suited for aquaculture. A tasting event was held for the media. The catfish produced by Kinki University received positive feedback. Catfish is a powerful food with the potential to create a large demand and cause a revolution in the market. Adige's laboratory is conducting further studies to commercialize these special catfish. If they hit the market, they are expected to be sold for about half the price of eels.